start. Okay, so now we're up and running. The topic for today, for today is uh, new sires, new stallions. There aren't many announced yet. Uh, there may be one or two more, but of the, of the ones that are announced, there's a couple of, there's a couple of obviously very significant ones. All Dark Stranger and Papi Rob Hanover going to Hanover Farms, uh, two exceptional racehorses. And then we have um, a couple of sons of Muscle Hill and Propulsion and Green Mountain DC uh, that, are, uh, that are going to stand this year in the US for the first time or on Canada. Uh, let's pause for a minute. There's somebody uh, who's got their mic on and has got uh, some people uh, talking in the background. And it, that, that transmits to everybody. I'd appreciate it if you just mute your mics unless you uh, um, want to make a comment or ask a question. Appreciate that, please. So let's take a look at first, let's have a look at the, the, the trotters first. I made some notes here. I haven't really examined them really in full detail, but I have a pretty good idea of what uh, Muscle Hill sons will do because um, he currently has 19 sons at stud with offspring and 11 of them have offspring of racing age. They're two years or older. So we have a pretty good idea what the sons of Muscle Hill are doing. So I'm just going to uh, put up, I'll put up Muscle Hill here. We'll do his offspring. And uh, I'm going to just select just for North America here for the time being. So there he is. His earliest ones are 2011. And uh, as you can see, uh, he's got 735 of racing age in North America. I'll just click that and make sure that's right. Okay. Uh, there are 739 of racing age in North America. And uh, an overall average of 21.9%, $100,000 winners, which puts him right up there, obviously, among the best. I mean, you're looking at 15% as a good average. 21.9 is is excellent. And within that statistic, of course, there are certain crosses, like the ones to Cantab Hall, obviously, uh, that are uh, showing up uh, uh, perhaps more often not than others. And similarly, Andover Hall and Angus Hall and Conway Hall all have their share of some of the top ones. Um, so you can look at this in another way. You can, you can, we can look at his, uh, look at his uh, profile. And we'll see a um, pretty, pretty consistent pattern uh, with the youngsters, with the best ones uh, by Muscle Hill. And it relates to Speedy Crown primarily, or the space, certainly the Speedster line. And we've gone over this before in the last couple of sessions I've shown you, but it's worth showing again. As you can see, uh, there are Garland of Bell, uh, well, the green stuff is all Noble Victor line. And so that's quite prominent in here. But what the most prominent line is, is the speedster line, which is the red line. And more often than not, it shows itself as being uh, a, a inbred in the mares. This, these are the lines, the sire lines in the mare. This is Don Rail's sire. This is Don Rail's dam is by Speedy Crown. The second dam is a Super Bowl by Super Bowl. The third dam is by Speedy Crown. And that's Marion Marauder. And the, the number one factor in Muscle Hill, obviously, is that 
he's either line bred or inbred to the speedy crown line. Line bred meaning something like this here, not speedy crown, but the speedster line. He was a speedster line that inbred, line bred. And, uh, but even more so, more uh, significant is the inbreeding in the mare between the dam of the broodmare sire and either the second or third dam. Here it is here. It's a speedster, there's a speedster, speedster. He's a double speedster here, double speedster here, 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 here. 17 of the 20, top 20. And once, when you see something like that, you set that aside and you say, you mark it down here in your comments to save later that uh, he obviously likes uh, mares that are inbred to speedster, primarily through the speedy crown line. But it could be this, Arnie Alma Hurst, like, like Madden Force, Pine Chip, Florida, Florida Pro. Uh, these are all the uh, speedster lines. Um, so that's the most, probably the most significant aspect of it. And then you go and look at the ones that aren't like that. Um, you got to go down here. Well, this one here, Manchego, is not. Uh, inbred. He's line bred to the speedster line, but he's not inbred to the speedy crown line or the speedster line, but he is a, a double double pedigree. So that gives him a perfectly good excuse for being an exception to the rule. Mission brief, exactly the same way. This is a double double pedigree. It's, uh, it's got speedster, Nova Victory, and Bolt. And, and uh, Star Sprite, just the same as we have up here. So again, it's an exception to the general rule, but it's a double-double pedigree. And uh, there's, I think there's one other down here, this one here, which again, Mel B. Free is a double-double pedigree. It's got all three key, in the, key lines in the, in the pedigree. Speedy Crown, Nova Victory, and Star Sprite, same as up here. So, Trickster. so they're, um, that's, that's the Muscle Hill. And the reason Muscle Hill is doing that, primarily with the Speedy Crown line, as, as I've mentioned, I'm sure before, is because he himself is a Speedy Crown line sire. And most of these, as a consequence, are what's called TB pattern pedigrees. Uh, they're by a sire line that is inbred into the mare. And what, you're, what you'll see, we're going, to live, we're going to be looking at this guy anyway, so I'll bring him up here. Now, oh wait, I'm going to go to another one that's, uh, that's got foals here. Um, tricks. So the pedigree of Edward and Beauty, this is his best one. And when you take a look at her, you see some interesting stuff here. But uh, primarily here is a Angus Hall and Emily Cassell, which is a, who are full sisters and brothers. But you have a Valley Victory and Muscles, uh, another Valley Victory. And uh, and uh, the noble victory lines through Carl and Labelle here, um, but the key here, of course, is that here's the valley, uh, uh, the speedy crown line through Valley Victory. Here it is again down here, and there's the Valley Victory line up here. So evident beauty is a TB pattern with a very uh, with a very strong double here, X factor double to Amur Angus. I mentioned in two uh, sessions ago, we talked about the importance of Hatteras and uh, in uh, being doubled up across a pedigree. And this is a filly that has a strong double to Hatteras across her pedigree, uh, extractor double. So gets gets it through Rosemary and Texas. So uh, obviously pretty nice. Um, 
I'm going to have, bring up a list that might take a little bit longer, but I want to show you all of the offspring of Muscle Hill so far, just so you can get an idea of what sire lines are working. As you saw with uh, Muscle Hill, the majority of the, uh, the, the individuals were not uh, Speedy Crown or Valley Victory line. There were some, but I think it's 13 of them are other Noble Victory or Star Spride line uh, dams. So I'm going to uh, do the same position on uh, on Muscle Hill as as the grand sire. These are, as it says, Muscle Hill with in, in position four. That's position four here. This is position one, two, three, four, so forth, so forth, so forth. So these are all the ones essentially by sons of Muscle Hill. Now, uh, most of them are by, uh, the, by the two sires, Trixon and E.L. Titan, that uh, have been out there the longest. They're at foals of 2016, to be four-year-olds this year. And uh, as you can see, that evident beauty is actually the top one. E.L. Titan has the second best one. And you go down here, here's the good one by bar hopping this year. Bar hopping is, uh, is um, by Muscle Hill and uh, has had a very successful two-year-old season. He's got quite a few of the races, two or three good ones. Here's Pub Crawl down here, made 202,000. Uh, another one down here, Arnold and Dickie made 152. So bar hopping is off to a pretty good start. Uh, you might not be familiar with Southwind Spirit, uh, but they obviously had a good one here. It'd be interested to see what that one looks like. So this is Southwind Spirit. Now here's, the, here's an interesting one now, because this one has absolutely no speedy crown whatsoever to end. Yep. And I've just finished telling you that we should be looking perhaps for mares that have in, uh, are inbred to speedy crown. But what does she have? Look at Southwind Spirit's own dam. There is no speedy crown in there, uh, not active, not in the lines that we're looking at. This is a Star Sprite line, and this is a Speedy Scott or Arnie Amor's line. So, and of course, Muscle Hill's maternal lines were both Star Sprite. So you have Star Sprite, Star Sprite, Nova Victory, Star Sprite. And three of the lines here are, are up here. So that's an interesting deviation, but it's obviously, it will probably be an exception to the general rule, but it's driven by the fact that this particular mayor has absolutely no uh, no uh, uh, speedy crown in it. Whereas, uh, and, and it's by a son of Muscle Hill, who similarly has no speedy crown maternally. Does have a speedy crown inbred, as you can see here. It's not that he himself wasn't correctly bred. You can see Southwind Spirit. Um, you can see here's the inbreeding of the speedy crown. But when it, he becomes a sire, um, his principal lines are the pine chip line and the bonefish line. These are the ones you look to connect with. Maybe, but maybe perhaps in this particular instance, the fact that this one, uh, this, the dam didn't have any speedy crown, appreciated getting some extra speedy crown from here. I don't know. Such are the vagaries of uh, interpreting pedigrees. And that Southwind spirit, isn't he from the family of uh, Mission Brief? Yep. Southland Spirit. Mm, you got me on that one. I, I, I didn't really notice that one. We get, we'll see where this one goes. He's the half brother of Southwind Serena. Yeah, the dam of Mission Brief. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there she yeah, is. Right there. There, yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. And Mission Brief had tactical landing. And 
And that, uh, I think, was uh, ended up as a, uh, that's a Nova Victory line, Speedster, Pine Chip, Stars Pride, all the same lines up here. This is a this is a double double pedigree tactical landing. So as you can see, there's usually when uh, there's one that shows up like tactical landing uh, um, that doesn't quite hew to the mare uh, having a mare that's inbred to Speedy Crown. It turns out to be a, a double double, so you get off the hook that way. Um, what else do we have down here that's new? Uh, not many made it to the end of the good ones. There's the, we're basically, what we have to date from his sons, and this may be a little discouraging, although um, a lot of these sons of Bustle Hill went off into Illinois and Indiana and uh, lesser areas that where perhaps they're not uh, going to get the, the right kind of mares, but so far he's got 1135 a racing age and only 4.2 percent success rate. That's covering them all and a lot of them is down here by uh, lesser sires. There's Southwind Frank, he's supposedly should have been better than this. Let's see what he's got. He's got a fertility problem. <laughs> he's also got a production problem by the look of this. And then, of course, this is his first crop. Here's one good one, flawless country. And this one is inbred to the Valley Victory line. Out of a mare that's inbred to Valley Victory. And uh, so, the pattern continues, uh, and I think you'll find that if you want to look at the at the other sons of like Trixton himself. Trixton uh, has uh, just been moved to Ontario to make way for. Uh, Another son of Muscle Hill that we're going to look at uh, sh shortly, propulsion. Uh, but as you can see, there's a lot of similarity to uh, Muscle Hill's profile here, in that you have this inbreeding. There's three of them in a row that are inbred to Speedy Crown line. Here's a double double, Starita. It's not inbred, but it's a double double pattern. Here's another one, another one in red. Uh, Golden Tricks is a bit of an outlier. Uh, here's another double double. Here's a, a inbred to inbreeding here to a Speedy Crown, another double double here, inbreeding to Speedy Crown, another double double here, so on and so forth. So basically, they have two patterns Tricks and Muscle Hill. They're both they're the same. Um, we could have a look at uh, El Titan too and see what he's doing. Oh, I lost him. I lost him. Okay. Titan was very interesting. You see, there's hardly any, there's no speed, there's only one speedy crown line dam in that whole crew there. He is, uh, but he only has, what well, is yeah, maybe 13 good ones, 14 good ones. That's the best one here. And it's uh, inbred to speedster, inbred to speedster, inbred to speedster. This one is, this one is, this one is, this one is. Uh, double, double, uh, double, double again. Inbred, inbred, double, double. Another outlier that's got a lot of uh, um, star sprite in it, which basically is what's in the bottom end of Muscle Hill. Uh, so you just note that on one side, if you're going to breed the eel titan, it's quite possible you could take a mare like this to them and be successful. But for the most part, as you can see, uh, they're double, 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 or, and TB. You know, it's pretty standard stuff. 
Uh, so, not hard to figure out where Sons of uh, Muscle Hill will go. So let's have a look at uh, the two new ones. Let's um, um, wait now. Oh, but it's better be up here, I guess. Green Mammalicia is Swedish bread. So he has a bit of uh, foreign blood in him. As you can see down here, this is the French line. But it's a, it's a French line that goes through Forreston and starts pride. So in that respect, it shouldn't be any problem. If this was a purely a French line here. It would add an element of uncertainty to the, to the pedigree. Uh, if you were trying to find something that perhaps is a double-double to a situation like that, you wouldn't find it in North America uh, if this was a purely French line. But it's a Star's Pride line, so uh, that should work. And Green Man Lishi, again, if you look at him, here's the inbreeding to Speedy Crown and his dam. Um, fine chip line, Star's Pride line. You go up here, you got Uh, of course, the two Star Sprite lines in Muscle Hill, um, and you have a Star Sprite line here. And also there's this Hickory Pride connection. Surprising number of the, the Muscle Hills show this Hickory Pride connection. Of course, Hickory Pride is, is damaged by Dean Hanover. That's the Haveris connection I talk about all the time for this particular group of sires, the Muscle Hill in, in particular. Because his, uh, his pedigree is dominated by Hatteras maternally. And here's a mare that has Hatteras maternally through here and also through here. So this mare is a double to Hatteras. So again, you see uh, the, a repeat of a continuing repeat of certain patterns within uh, the successful ones uh, by the Muscle, Muscle Hill. And I suspect that that will continue on um, because these lines in turn will connect to the, the same lines in the mares that they're breeding, that these sons are going to be bred to. I did a, uh, um, I looked at uh, this sire uh, with respect to another mare earlier on Oh, I can't remember her name now. I'll dig it out before we get through here. Uh, oh, Dream for Lindy. I want to have a look at. I thought she, he wanted to, uh, the, the owner wanted to breed to, uh, was thinking of either Manalishi or Trixton. And they are different maternally. So this is. Um, I'm going to do a hypothetical with the, with the, what is it? Oh dear, dear, dear. You know what's interesting, Norm, is that they yeah. got Green Man Alishi standing at Terra Hills and they got Resolve standing there and maternally both of those horses are very, very similar. Matter of fact, they are both very similar because they're both by Muscle Hill and out of the same, very similar maternal family. Yeah, well, that's um, there's a reason for that. Now you can call David and find find out what the reason is. Um, I'm not at liberty to pass it along to you. He's also got a problem with cadaver too. Yeah. So he needs to restock on his cotton blood, uh, bloodlines, that's for sure. Well, Trixon has gone to... Uh, Winback. Winback, yeah. But here's the, here's the Green Manalishi 
And the reason I went with, with green metal, metal eastward for this one was simply because of the, uh, the fine chip connection across the pedigree. I think that's an important uh, maternal connection, particularly since it's E2 mm -hmm. is a Hatteras through Posey Hanover. Um, so rather than Trixton, who didn't seem to quite fit as well, but so there are variations in the overall pedigree with respect to the individuals in the maternal lines of these sons. But again, uh, you're looking at why not breed this mare to a, mus a Muscle Hill son, whatever, because she too is Valley Victory, Speedster Valley Victory here. She's inbred to Valley Victory. Yeah. Uh, so that's, uh, uh, he's got a, a good TB uh, pattern uh, with a mare that fits right into the prof profile of either um, Muscle Hill or one of his sons. And so that was my recommendation there. And I think that's going to be pretty much what it is going to be. You're going to find similar to Muscle Hill and the other sons of Muscle Hill. You're going to find a lot of Nova Victory line dams inbred to Speedster and uh, particularly those that are inbred to Valley Victory. Like uh, Donato, of course, dam is Valley Victory. Andover's dam is is speech to line, but uh, it's the uh, Arniama Hirsch line. I think this particular pattern with <clears throat> with Valley Victory here and here, uh, complemented with this pine chip, will make this a pretty powerful pedigree. So that's Green Manalishi, I think. And if we look at Francis, we look at uh, the other guy, Propulsion. He was also considering Propulsion and uh, there wouldn't be anything wrong with this either. Carl LaBelle, Valley Victory. There's Donato, Valley Victory, and overall. Valley Victory, Speedster, Speedster. Uh, no muscle, no uh, Star Sprite in here, but it, it doesn't se really seem to matter to, to Muscle Hill whether there's a Star Sprite maternally. There is a Star Sprite maternally and probably over half of the good ones by them, but it doesn't seem to be a key factor. Other than we have seen that there were instances with the, the couple of his sons that, there were, that are dominated by at least two and some and occasionally three lines of star sprite in the in the mares. But those are kind of outliers. They're still part of the overall pattern, but they're a minor part. Uh, there's never you'll never come up with a profile that is exact for all 20, uh, a single profile factor that is exact for every uh, one of these top 20. You'll end up with a profile that leads, you, you want to get the majority, number one profile factor for the majority of the horses. And then you might have two or three options for exception situations, just simply because they showed up in the, in, 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 in the top 20. So that if you're coming along with a mare and you're looking at the sire and you don't have the general pattern, but you got something that looks like it actually does work, then by all means, give it a shot. So here's um, propulsion. This particular, this particular combination of Andover Hall and Valley Victory is it will be very potent maternally. I don't know if there's any. I'm going to have a look. We ha I, I'm going to look through the stallion finder here, and we're going to be looking for trotting stallions that have that green red maternal combination, and particularly. Uh, uh, Speedster line. Uh, the Stalin Finder is a document that you can get off of the, of, I, I update it every year, and it lists all of the active stallions in North America, there's some 300 of them, but, and uh, sorts them by stallion, uh, by their stallion line of 
These are speech for lion stallions, obviously, because they're in red. And these ones have uh, first dams by Nova Victory line in green, and second dams by Star Sprite line in blue. So you group them all together and you will find, if you go down and look at their best ones, they'll all have a same general uh, statement in terms of what they do best with. In this case, I, 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 it's kind of cryptic because I don't have much space to lay it out in full, but these mares, mares that, are, that, that have these combinations, um, uh, with, with these sires, mean that these sires will lean towards, not exclusively, but lean towards non-speedy crown line dams, with the exception of those with a star's pride line in second or third dam. So that is, uh, that's a general statement. And you can go and look at Guccio, for instance, and you will look at these top ones, and you'll see that's that's pretty much what it is. There will be the odd exception. Now we're looking for, uh, these, um, we're looking for specifically a uh, Nova Victor line to one of the Hall boys and Va Valley Victory maternal combination to get as close as we can to see if there's anything like that. So these are all greens down here. Um, here's a couple of Muscle Hills already out there, Crescent Fashion, SS Poseidon, it's the same sort of pedigree. It's a somewhat similar, it's a, it's a son of a, a speedy crown. Another one somewhat similar here, Merchandiser. These are lesser sons. Um, that one's in Ontario, this one's on Ohio. Uh, this one here is in o Indiana, you see over here, Crescent Fashion is in Indiana. Sterling Enforcers in Maine. Oh, no, that's a glide master. So there are a number of sires out there. Um, up here, you see, these are the ones that are, that are Noble Victor line dams, but have, uh, these two have uh, pine chip maternally. This is one here by, with, a, with a son of uh, Southwind Camel. He's in Florida, just standing the first year down there, but he's got a, Valley Victor line. But as you can see, there's none. Um, in fact, I don't even have this guy on the list because he wasn't standing in proportion on the list. But if I want to put him in the list, um, he would go somewhere, somewhere here. I'm just going to put them in for you. Standing in New Jersey. And when you get your, if you get a copy of this, you can do the same thing. You can edit it like this. Uh, the copy that's downloadable is a PDF, but, but if you if you don't want to work in PDF, I can send you the, it in the Word, which is what it is here. And that was a valley victory, yeah. So. So he's in the book now. But anyway, there are none that are active that have foals that I'm aware of <clears throat> here. Let me see. A merchandiser. No, not quite the same. Um, Crescent Fashion. I think maybe he just has yearlings. We'll have a look. Usually with new sires, you can find a sire that's already had 
that has similar background, just like I'm looking at, similar pedigree that already has the foals racing. Now they're all 2019. So there's nothing out there that looks like them that's already got foals racing. But we do have a pretty good line on what the sons of Bustle Hill will, will do. And this guy should be no different. So when you go to the sale and you buy something that doesn't have the, a Muscle Hill profile, don't expect that the, you're taking the chance. It's uh, you play the percentages and go with what you know as opposed to what you think. So those are the two Muscle Hills. They were fairly easy. Now the next two, I'm going to switch over to the Pacers here. Uh, probably the most anticipated one this year, and I imagine his book is already full already. It's called Dark Stranger. I'll learn to spell one of these days. So here's Tall Dark Stranger. As you can see, uh, it's an old fashioned type of pedigree match. Abercrombie Albatross, Abercrombie Albatross. And uh, of course, that's just exactly what Better's Delight looked for and, and the majority of his, uh, his best was Abercrombie and Albatross in the dams. You can do a profile of Better's Delight and I think 19 out of the top 20 have that. Uh, so that's uh, not, it's not, so it wasn't unexpected. It's also a TV pattern because it's Meta Skipper line uh, and the, the dam is inbred to the Meta Skipper line here and here. Uh, you have this uh, big towner showing up in the pedigree. Of course, big towner is a Margaret Parish and Art, Art Major is a Margaret Parish. So Precocious Beauty is a double to Margaret Parish, which is great for any horse that inherits, inherits it in terms of uh, his uh, future as a, as a sire, because there are a lot of uh, mares out there that carry Margaret Parish that, uh, that he can hook onto. But there is a, a cautionary note here. Um, Sons of Better del Delight so far, I'm just going to, let me see here. we we'll put up his offspring and you'll see some of the best ones here and some of the ones that have gone to, gone to uh, stud. And uh, I'll give you an idea of what, what's happening there. And uh, these ones all have, they're all relatively young, these ones, it's a betting line. Um, pretty modest start for betting line, considering what they paid for them. And as you can see, the top two, the only two good ones are both west, uh, by out of Western Hanover line dams. Uh, not unexpected. That's a crossed on sire line. Um, I'm going to put the pedigree of this guy up here because I want to. I want to check out everything that's by a son of Better's Delight. If I click on here and choose same position, now I can come up with the list of all of the ones by Better's Delight sons. There's a lot of them. A lot of them are uh, perhaps uh, they're well they're in uh, New Zealand. I, I'm just going to not that I don't like New Zealand or uh, Australian horses. I prefer when I'm looking at a stallion that's going to stand in North America to look at the, the offspring that he's had in North America. 
So I'm just going to have, I'm going to check the North America offspring. I mean, if you were in New Zealand uh, or, uh, or Australia, you'd do the opposite. You'd want to know what Sons of Better's Delight are doing, like with the breed down there, because it is different. There are differences. Um, so what works in North America doesn't automatically work in, in Australia. Same thing for trotters. What works in North America may not work in Sweden, for instance, and vice versa. Um, even though there might, it might be the, you know, the, you, can, you see horses going from North America over to Sweden doing much better percentage-wise than they, than they did in North America. Um, one recent example is uh, F.J.'s Caviar, who, who's doing really, really well in Sweden <clears throat> in terms of his percentage of top ones relative to everybody else than he ever did in North America. Maybe the competition's not as great there, but still he's doing exceptionally well. So, so it, uh, that's the way it works. <clears throat> so anyway, here we have all of the best by Sons of Better's Delight. Uh, there's 870 of them. If you go over here, you'll see that the oldest is in 2010. So he's had 10 years of production um, by sires that are his sons. That one of the earliest ones is Kenneth J, who is a total flop. Uh, so, not a total flop, but it didn't work out as good as he, people thought he would. Um, so here's, um, here's what's happening. The best one is Lather Up by I'm Gorgeous. And then one here by Mr. Apples. Another one by My Go I'm Gorgeous. A bunch of them by Better and Cheddar. And Betting Line. I mean, these are not bad sires uh, in terms of them being racehorses. But so far, statistically, uh, nothing seems to be working very good. 5.5% at this stage of the game when you, when you have had sons out there with poles for 10 years now, doesn't give you a whole lot of... Uh, it doesn't give me a whole lot of comfort uh, about the future of uh, other sons. But that being said, there hasn't been another son quite like, quite like uh, Tall Dark Stranger. And maybe this, this is the guy that will turn things around for the sons of Better's Delight. Interesting thing, when you look at these pedigrees, you get, you get a chance to see... Um, I'm not sure. Let's go back to the book here. We'll go back and have a look at that. He won't be in the book either because he's, he's new, but he's... Um, maternally, he's... Where is he? Well, I had him in there. Let me bring him up again. As maternally, maternally, he's Abercrombie, no nukes. Basically, Abercrombie line, no nukes lines. And you could reasonably expect that the mares that he'd do best with will have one or other, or hopefully both there. Also, since it's a better's delight. And if you look at the sons of better's delight, what they've been doing, they lean heavily on mares that have albatross maternally. So there's this, these are the three things, and there's another Abercrombie here. So, and of course, Art, Art Major is out of an uh, Annihilator Romero. So those are the three lines that I would expect to see in, the, in some combination or other in the, the dams that work best with Tall, Tall Dark Stranger. But what is going to be the lead line? Is it going to be Abercrombie line? Is it going to be, it's not, obviously not going to be Albatross line because there are no very, very few albatross line mares left out there. 
it's going to be either Abercrombie line or most happy color line. But what about some beach somewhere? Where does that come in? Obviously, this this horse is going to be bred to a lot of some beach somewhere mares. I mean, Hanover's got, it. I'm sure, quite a few of them. And uh, it would be a logical thing for them to do. But is it? It may be logical in terms of convenience, but is it something that should be done? Well, let's have a look and see what uh, but, um, what's happening with some beach somewhere in there. Or Captain Treacherous. I'm getting to him. Don't get ahead of me. Okay. <laughs> So far as the broodmares are, where is he be going? Western, 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 Abercrombie, Abercrombie, Western, Abercrombie, Western, Abercrombie, Western, 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 Western. There's the better's delight. You got to go a long way down to find a, a, a better's delight sire or a a camp fellow inside for that matter. And you're going to keep going here. And eventually at the right at the bottom of the here, you might find another, there's a couple of betting lines. And another better's delight. Like two out of the top ones are uh, camp fellow line dams through better's delight. So I know it's early in some beach somewhere's profile as a broodmare sire, but you can't ignore that sort of thing. There has to be uh, a reason for it, and chances are it'll continue to be that way. And there may well be situations such as this one here, that uh, make sense. This is better as the light. Abercrombie Albatross. Abercrombie down here. Uh, Metal Skipper line in here. PB pattern. Got some pluses in it. But looks like they might, it might be a bit dodgy. Now, somebody mentioned Captain Treacherous. Uh, and I think that's, there's good possibilities there. I'm, he do, obviously doesn't have any, doesn't have any uh, um, broodmares yet. But let's see what a couple of his mares would look like. And uh, don't shut, take the, uh, look at, here, there's the hand of a one there. What does that look like? Tall red to tall dark. What would you call that one? <laughs> Bottle of rum or what? Captain Morgan. So now you're looking at an entirely different scenario here because you have, you have, here's the Abercrombie uh, Western Hanover combination maternal here and another, another uh, Meta Skipper line. 
So you have the three important lines. Here you have Nornux, Abercrombie, Abercrombie, Albatross again. Uh, but so you have that package down here. And you have the opportunity here of an outcross on Sire Line. So to the extent that going back to some beach somewhere, you could find mares that might be, that might have Western Hanover or a Nornux Abercrombie combination down here at the bottom half of the pedigree, you might be all right. But this would be much preferable to my mind. I like to see the, the stuff in the middle being the stuff that's here. Um, it just works better to my mind. And this is a TV pattern down here, the most happy fellow, two lines here. And in fact, it's a double double. So, Captain Treacherous has a number of mares like this. In fact, he is primarily leaning on, just like some beach was, leaning on Western Hanover Line dams. And um, so they, there will be lots of opportunity. And I think that's the way you go. If you've got a Captain Treacherous filly, line it up with the tall, dark stranger, and I think you'll have a pretty good shot. I was interested in this horse particularly because I just uh, became part of a syndicate um, for a horse called, uh, I'll put him up here, Flame Proof Hanover, I think I, I showed him before. And we're going to stand him here on PEI. Last horse. So, of course, you wouldn't, you wouldn't read it this way, <laughs> but you can see maternally here, he's, he's no nukes, our space, which is a flip side of what the, what the tall rock stranger is. And uh, if this wasn't happening, the rest of the pedigree would probably work out pretty good because um, flame proof has the same combination as uh, as uh, Tall Rock Stranger maternally. He's got an Abercrombie here, Albatross, and now uh, 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 a Western Hanover, an Onyx, and another Albatross. The same package, the same four maternal lines are apparent in flame proof Hanover, just a different sire line. And so I just bought a mare here to go with this sire. Now, I don't know what he's going to work with. He's going to, this will be a first crop sire, but I, I'm pretty sure that this mare is, is the kind that will work. She's a Jeremy's Jet. There's the Western Hanover. Here's the Arts Place. Here's another Abercrombie line here. And here's a, a Metaskipper line through Camphala. Uh, not a Metaskipper line here. And of course, the fact that Cam fell as in the maternal lines of this was kind of key in some beach somewhere, may have it a bearing or may not. But at least this one is a Cam fell out of an albatross line here. So, and it's a great maternal family. So I would suspect that this is the kind of mare that would uh, do very well with the with the tall dark stranger too. Not that I'm going to tuck, him, tuck her back down there. I can't afford the sun fee. But. The, mayor, the mayor is the staying together together family. The Macintosh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Happily yeah. involved, yeah. Yeah. Hell of a horse. Yeah, he sure was. Actually, Flame Proof Hanover was a fast horse. He got hurt or something Something weird happened to him. Yeah, he, he was a fast horse at two. And um, he, uh, it, uh, Ed uh, James, my, one of my clients, bought him on my recommendation at the Harrisburg sale as a two-year-old because he showed last quarter as a, as a two-year-old in 26. Yeah. And so I, that was the sort of thing, that's the reason we bought McWicket the first time around. 
yeah. same situation. He had a very similar profile in his two-year-old year. They both had nine starts. They both won one race. They both showed quarters in 26 seconds. And uh, they had been beat up. So unfortunately, this horse ended up going to Pompano uh, to be trained. was trained back for his three-year-old year. And uh, some idiot went down the shed row and let out half a dozen of the horses, opened the doors. You know, they have the open shed rows down in Pompano. Yeah, yeah. Opened the doors, these horses got out running through the yard and flame proof ended up on, in, uh, on top of the track grading equipment. Oh. So he got banged up pretty good and that basically finished him as a racehorse. So he tried to train him back and they did get him back to the races at three and then he got courted by a, a stupid groom. So back to the back to training again in Pompano and back to the races up in New Jersey, qualified him, raced him. He could beat ahead in his first start back in two years. Yonkers in 55, and then was lame the next one. So he was done. Yeah. So he just didn't never recovered from all the bangs and smashes that he got. Yeah. So it's just a, but he's got tremendous pedigree. I mean, yeah, he he's a three quarter brother to a two million dollar horse. So yep. A bunch of other stuff. But anyway, his Galleria right there. Yep. Anyway, uh, let's let's read uh, just for fun. We'll read Katie's Jet to Captain Treacherous. My dream. My dream horse it would be. Because look at this. Yep. Perfect profile, world order, full sisters. Yep. Probably the hottest, one of the hottest uh, fa families in the in Pacers today. Yep, Rodine Hanover. Rodine Hanover, Ramona Hanover. And uh, not only that, you got you got the, the double Abercrombie, double Abercrombie. You got an Abercrombie annihilator, Cam Fella line, and another Metascapper line here. So but he he looks every bit as good with the uh, tall dark stranger, tall dark stranger too. You got the same thing. Yep. Art Major, same same maternal family. The big town annihilator, big town, and uh, there's annihilator there, there again. So I do have options if uh, if flame proof doesn't come through. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and if he makes enough money off of stud fees, I might be able to go down here and breed one of these other guys. Well, actually, if you look at Pennsylvania between Diamond Creek and, Han and Hanover Shoe Farm, they got they got a little bit of a problem. They got uh, Better's Wish, Better's Betting Line, Tall Dark Stranger, and Captain Crunch uh, competing there all against one another. They got more, more sire power than they've got broodmare power to support them. Yeah, they do, and 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 uh, of course the betters, the light ones are no, to my mind, are no guarantee. Uh, we've seen that already with betting line. That uh, I mean, he's just going to fall right off the cliff if he doesn't uh, get anything uh, coming along, um, because he was. I mean, people spent a lot of money on those. Uh, this uh, this uh, last year, not so much this year. And we're largely disappointed. So anyway, I think uh, Tall Dark Stranger has got a future ahead of them, as long as it's same as any of the others are. They have a future if they get the right kind of mares. Um, and I'm assuming that Hanover, 
uh, knows how to put them together. Uh, they have a fairly decent track record in that respect. But at $14 million is a very expensive stud. How much are they charging? Well, uh, about 100,000 per share. So if you have 140 shares. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, well, what else is there coming to stud? That's the problem we have right now. In the last two or three years, the studs that have come to, with the possible exception of Captain Treacherous, who's now into his fourth or fifth crop, fourth crop anyway. A lot of the new studs just aren't doing anything. We're still depending on Better's Delight and stallions like that have been around forever to produce the good horses. And too bad we lost some beats somewhere because I pretty much guarantee that he'd be going on for another 10 years right at the top level. But there's a lot of these new sires just don't seem to pack the same kind of power as the, as the older ones do for some reason. I don't know what it is. Well, you got Ameri you got American Ideal that they've been riding hard. I mean, he's getting almost almost. But exactly, and he's still getting them. he's still getting good horses. Yeah, he's but he's horses. got no sons no other sons. than Heston Blue Chip. Exactly. I said I, I had an argument with Myron Bell about that one time well, early on when he first uh, got going, and we were looking at uh, some of the uh, yearlings down at the. Uh, in Kentucky and leaning over the fence and he was pointing out to all these American ideals and Colts and you know, I said, are any of them going to be any good? I said, I said what do you mean? And mm -hmm. well, so far, this was early on, I, first three crops, I think he had, out of his top 10, seven of them were Phillies. Yeah. And I said, it looks like he's going to be a Philly sire. He's, he's, he's supposed to ever get a son by him that's any good? Sure we will, he said. Well, I'm still waiting. Yeah, Rock and Roll Hanover and American Ideal were, were competitors and uh, you know, and the, the rest of its history. Rock and Roll Hanover has got all kinds of sons and American Ideal's got one, maybe, if yeah. you call Heston Blue Chip a son. Yeah. How about well, Sweet How about Sweet Lou? Um, no, well, let's, let's just, just stick with what uh, the topic at uh, hand here right now. We're going to, uh, yeah, okay. We'll... Um, We'll take a look at the uh, Papi Raw. Now, Papi Raw of Hanover is somebody somewhere. Out of a mare that combines Western Hanover and Cam Fallon. Guess what other sire they have already that does that? Betting line. Betting line's maternal line is pretty much the same. It was, at least it's got it's the same here and here. Uh, is that a good or a bad omen? I'm not sure. Betting line was a fast horse, just like Papi Rob was. Very fast horse. But he suffered from the same the same problem uh, as, uh, but he, Betting Line had a problem besides that because he had, uh, um, it was Cam Fowler, Cam Fowler, Cam Fowler on the top line, Cam Fowler on the bottom line, which is something that's most unusual in terms of uh, good sires. And I really didn't, I, I wasn't in love with him as a result of that to start with. So, the fact that he hasn't done all that well is probably not particularly surprising to me. But the, uh, this particular situation is uh, Papi Rob. When he went through the sale, I must admit, he didn't make my list. He wasn't on my list of recommended beach horses to buy. And the reason was at that time, some Beach Somewhere's profile showed that this Abercrombie line was important and he's in the dams that work with him. Now that at the time that he went to the sale, his dam didn't have any Abercrombie. 
still doesn't other than down here. But I mean, maybe that's not, I'm looking here, 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 and here. So I didn't pick him out. Uh, he's one of the ones that got away, but I mean, it, I, I made my decision on the basis of, of the information that was available at the time. He just turned out to be an exception to the rule. And there are always individuals like that. So if you look at the some beach somewheres, typically my profile at the time was that they that they did best with mayors that had Abercrombie and or Big Town or maternally. And so you can go down the line here and you can see, well, there's an adios line, it's not Abercrombie, but it's the same adios line. You go all the way down here. And there's one that's not quite the same. It's got a good timeline in it. But every single one of these has an arts place or a big town in line, or an Abercrombie or a big town in line, with the exception of this one and this one. And this one is Papi Rod. Now, we made a million dollars and set a world record for three year old over a 5 8 track. Will that make him a sire? I don't know. I suspect that uh, there's, it's a fluke situation. Um, if you look at his pedigree, I think there was a previous son or daughter. There's one here. Oh, that's more recent, is it? It's a two-year-old. It's raced. Betting line in the yearling and this one is, is was the first one she read to was Captain Treacherous. That filly wasn't as big as a Shetland pony. This one here? Yeah. Well, she, she, she got a mark. Yeah. So, and really, I look down here and Panera here, well, she had 158,000 made. But it's not an overpowering maternal family. There's no million dollar winners in the year other than himself. So at the time when he went through the sale, I, I didn't put him on the list because he didn't fit the profile. Now, if one comes along that looks like this, another one that looks like this, maybe you'll, maybe, maybe you'll take a, a close look at him. I, just one that uh, got away. But generally speaking, as you can see, this is the profile for some beach somewhere. And just like some beach somewhere, that's the profile for most of the ones he's done best with so far. They're not all, there's only one, two, three, four, five, six Abercrombie lines here. If you look at Captain Treacher's, I think there's only three that are out of, uh, um, out of Abercrombie lines. The majority of them are just like some beach somewhere Western Hatter, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in this instance, or some beach somewhere, Todd or B. There's a couple of only two Campfella lines. And there's a Dragon's Lair, and a two, these are both Todd or B. So, in terms of overall sire lines, if you wanted to get a millionaire by some beach somewhere, you knew pretty well what you had to go to. And if you went for, with an Abercrombie line, you had to go to one that was inbred that met a skipper and hopefully had albatross in there, here, here. Or Camphala, albatross. This was, of course, the great uh, rainbow blue. So uh, there was something special about her. And there's the albatross again in there. So, so you can make a, a case for a profile for some beach somewhere that he'd obviously like mares that were inbred or line bred to the Meta Skipper line, as you can see, for the most part. And, uh, or Abercrombie line uh, dams that have albatross 
maternally for albatross or camphala in this instance. So, so there's, uh, that's basically the profile that you would write down for yourself as, a, as an initial guide. And uh, for sons of some beach somewhere, well, let's see what they've done. See what kind of sire lines are in their top ones. There's quite a few uh, sons of uh, some beach somewhere out there, almost as many as there are uh, Muscle Hills, or uh, I think 20 or so from my body here. There's 20 or so out there, and some of them have been going for a while. They're dominated, of course, by Captain Treacherous. But as you can see, I'll, 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 I'll put the racing age ones up here. And I'll just make sure I scan for just the North American ones. So there are 1,200 out there of racing age, 5.2%. And mind you, the oldest are only 5, 2015. So he has a ways to go before he reaches his peak. Uh, by this time, though, so, most sires, if they're going to be any good after they've got the first first five crops, or, <coughs> you know, by fifth year of the first uh, rumor sire, it, it should be creeping closer to 10%, but not so far. Uh, we've seen Captain Treacherous and what he's done. And uh, as you saw, his, his profile is very similar to, to um, some be somewhere. So surreal. Yeah. In New York, uh, has a, not a bad bunch so far. In fact, his, old, his oldest for 2015, and he's, he's beating the overall average for uh, some beat somewhere. Sons. Is nine percent, which is what I would expect. A, a decent sire. I mean, he's, ultimately, he's going to settle around fifteen percent, probably, by the time you get to twenty twenty-five. Um, so, and I'm not sure what Captain Treacherous was. We go back, clear that. If you look at his overall, let me see. See where he is. He should he probably should up around 10%. Yeah. He's doing well. He's 11.4%. Captain Treacherous. Yeah. And his is oldest are only 2016. Uh, a percentage like that will probably take him into the 25%. You, usually after five years, you can double what he's showing. Yeah. And uh, he's only three four right. years in. Another year that will probably go up to 15 or 12 and a half anyway. So ultimately, as a, as a broodmare sire, I expect he'll be a 25% success rate sire at this rate. Um, if you look at some of the other ones here, so, so Sunshine Beach has been somewhat of a, uh, a bummer in Ontario. It started off poorly. Picking up a little late, later, they seem to be coming on a little better with age. Uh, what am I looking for in him, uh, offspring? <clears throat> so here's, uh, here's the best ones, by this has been the best one by far. Uh, understandably so, as you can see when you have a look at her pedigree. The beach has Metaskipper, Camphala, Abercrombie, No Nukes, No Nukes, Metas there, Camphala, and, and another 
uh, Adios or Abercrombie line, uh, it's an Adios line so down here. So this is a this is a double double pedigree, and uh, the mayor herself is uh, is the X factor to Helen Hanover, to Wendy Hanover, and to the, to uh, Falcon Sealster down here. So she had a lot of pluses go for her. And the beach too, of course, was also Alan Hanover through shifting scene. So Sunny D as a filly was very strong, X factor cross, and was a double double too. So uh, that's how you get to be the best by a certain sire. You try to package up all the pluses you can get into the into it. Um, so by and large, these offspring are by well, here's. Um, not surprisingly, there's a couple of Camlux in here, but there's so uh, one, two, three. Uh, of these good ones, only three, there's four, are um, Camphala line. But um, we're looking at the uh, Interesting, Norm. Both Sunshine Beach and Captain Treacherous were first crops from some beach somewhere. They both uh, were very competitive as far as price goes when they sold as yearlings, and they both raced well against one another. And then the separation took place when they but stood. You can't, you can't compare them with the level of mares that they got. No, 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 of course not. Of course not. In fact, the problem with uh, some be somewhere is that they basically opened the doors and said, come on in, and we'll even give you the, the first 20 in the door free breeding. Yeah. And they're still at that. And that's the only reason they've been able to hold their, their book up. But now we're starting to get a few. But generally speaking, if you look at his profile, uh, let's have a look at his profile. So uh, you can see a lot of similarity with the with the Sunbeat Somewhere crew. Yep. There's only four in there that are Abercrombie line. And the four that are in there are all inbred. Uh, there's Albatross, Albatross. There's a Dennis Beach Boys, a different uh, Meta Skipper line. Another one down here, there's, that's must be a full sister. Yeah. Oh, the same mare. So uh, just exactly the same. They're line bred or inbred to uh, the Metascopper line. And a lot of them have that, uh, have that albatross line in here. Or Tyler B, albatross, 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 albatross. Uh, Some be somewhere had the same kind of uh, uh, leaning towards mare that had, uh, mares that had albatross. See, I mean, you really like the mares with albatross or, 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 or uh, in the dam or a son of another son of meta skipper like forest skipper here um, plus of course this Abercrombie line as you can see here uh, or big tanner um, only two exceptions to that rule here of the 18 top ones by sunshine beach they all have either Ab Abercrombie or Big Towner or both in the, in the mares. And interestingly, this is the only one that looks like this one here is bred the same, maternally is bred the same as, uh, as um, um, Papi Rob. It's a rock and roll. Uh, out of a mare that's a Camp Fellow line with an Ornux third dam. Very interesting. No sun. So the only exception in his was the only, basically the only exception. The same as the only exception in Zombie Somewhere. I think that's a little weird. I never noticed that before. Let's uh, look at Poppy Rob again. We see 
you can see the similarity. Where do we get that one from? It's not the one we're looking for. The other guy disappeared on me. Cool. Anyway, as you see, it's rock and roll Hanover, it's Kambla, and Jade Lavelle, same maternal sequence. Yep. So, Strange things can happen twice, it looks like. So that what does that mean for Papi Rob Hanover now? I mean, let's have a look in the, in the book here and see if we can find, other than betting lines, see if, there, if there's something else out there that has that Western Hanover um, Cam Fella combination materially. Here they all are up here. And here's the ones that are uh, like Papi Rob, they're Nova Victor line yeah. or Wolomite line, the green. Here's the two Sumbi somewheres. See, they already have Stay Hungry there. That's not exactly the same, but it's somewhat so similar. It's a, it's a double Most Happy Fellow line and in line bread, Most Happy Fellow line dam. Um, down by the seaside is a is a Cam Fella no nukes combination. That's the flip of the what we're looking at here. Um, these ones are not quite the same. Um, so the one that's most, I guess, the most similar to them is down by the seaside, who's a flip, and that one I had troubles with. Uh, in terms of the yearling sales this year, I did, really didn't know which way to go in that one because what you're looking at here, down by the uh, um, some beast somewhere, maternal line is line bred to meta skipper. And down by the seaside's maternal line is line bred to meta skipper. So you have four lines of meta skipper in play. Where do you go to find mares like that? Well, you don't. And the other problem here is uh, it's a Nova Victor line star. And where do you go to find mares, pacing mares that are inbred to Nova Victory? That would be logically through Matt Scooter or Direct Scooter or whatever. I they're very they're very, very few few. There's all kinds of mares have direct scooter or Matt scooter in them, but finding one that's Matt scooter and direct scooter or some derivation of them here or here, <clears throat> you won't find them. Well, it might be the odd one, but so they'd be the only logical ones you could breed to in terms of getting a TV pattern. But what do you do with the rest of them? I mean, look at all these mares. There's not a single one of them is all all Matt Skipper line. Does that mean he's got a problem? Well, I think he's, it, what it does is it limits his uh, opportunities. Cyrus with um, uh, there are there are Cyrus like in the past, like. Um, that have had what I, I would call a wide spectrum of opportunity, simply because they have, uh, there are other mares that are not line red. There are other mares that are outcrossed on Sire line. And therefore they have two opportunities of which direction to go with respect to the mares, one or other of those particular Sire lines. 
Captain Treacherous, of course, is one of those. He's a zombie somewhere, but he has at least an opportunity to be bred to mares that will bring back Abercrombie. And although he himself uh, was not a, some beach wasn't strongly in favor of Abercrombie line bears, there are two of his best, one of his, his best one is uh, out of an Abercrombie line bear, and so is Captain Treacherous. So I would think that uh, having Abercrombie in the maternally and in a some beach somewhere sire would be a major plus. However, neither down by the seaside nor uh, uh, nor, nor um, um, Pappy Rob have that. Now I've already damned Pappy Rob once to be proven wrong, so I <laughs> uh, don't want necessarily to do it two times in a row. But I just, it's just that these sorts of things, I, I, I get these questions in my mind and I, and I can't wait to see them either come to pass or, or prove me wrong. Uh, he's proved me wrong once, so maybe he'll do it again, but I would hesitate myself to breed a mare to from my perspective. Um, Although, uh, I don't know what he's standing for. I suppose he'll get, he, based on the performance alone, he'll attract a lot of uh, good mares. And uh, I wish him the best. So that's our summary of the four. Has anybody got any other sires that have popped up that you're aware of? I, somebody said that Cattle Wash was going to go to stud, but I just noticed that he's returning to the races. So I, I guess that's not gonna happen unless he's doing dual, double duty. Um, anybody got any others? Thomas, have you got it? Uh, oh, Atlee, have you got any in Sweden, new ones over there? Atlee's not here anymore, he's gone. I was a mute. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> not mute anymore. Anyway. Yeah. What what was the question? If there were new, any new stallions here? Any new stallions in Sweden? Well, Relay Express. I was actually looking into Relay Express. Ready cash son. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but it's a li little bit early yet. But he's showing something in, Does he have four in, in the first crop. There's yeah. one crop, yes, out there. I may not have them updated, but. Well, no, he's not in the stallion uh, list. You need to find him as a. There he is. Yeah. Um, I probably have his yearlings in here. But whether I got any racing ones. Let's see. Searching. Uh, they're not racing yet, so are there? You, know, the the first one did this year. Oh yeah, here we go. So Readily Express has a kind of a, low, a, a bit of a mixed pedigree here. Obviously, he has some uh, French blood here. Um, nice horse called Revelation. He's probably got more money than that made by now. So here's um, um, Readily Express. Maternal Lions Super Bowl in Florida Pro, Speedster Super Bowl. And up here is another Star Sprite from Extreme Dream and the Speedy Crown line here. And uh, this mare has no Speedy Crown in it at all. It does have Super Bowl and, that, and Bonefish, you know, Neverly or Neverly Pride. Somewhat typical, I guess. Uh, it's it's uh, this is all pretty much all French down here. Oh, and this is a victory song of line here, but this is bottom line is all French. Yeah. Now well, Bo Bourbon is uh, out of a fork in there, and there's BF Gold down down there. 
So that's a mixture. Um, you see a lot of those coming up in the in the Scandinavia now. So. Are they breeding primarily to Super Bowl line, which is real logical? No, so, I, I wouldn't say that, that. It's more like they're they are going for the ready cash sons more and more. Yeah. 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 And of course, he's Star Sprite, Speedy Crown too. Have a look at him. Uh, interesting. Of course, we had a ready cash uh, winner, major winner in the, this year in back of the neck. Yeah. Order by stables. I probably told you this, I maybe told you the story about that one. We were going over the breedings uh, that year and he said he wanted to breed one to ready cash. And, uh, he, and it was an Andover Hall one. And at that time, looking at Ready Cash's uh, profile again, at a point in time, and four years ago, uh, there was nothing showing in terms of uh, Nova Victory Line SARS uh, dams. So I said, well, you're probably going for the wrong SAR line. Maybe you should go, you know, there's American winter ones or go in Super Bowl or whatever. It's a Super Bowl Speedy Crown, it's his maternal lines. So you probably should go with one or the other of those. There's nothing that shows Nova Victory up here. But he went ahead and did it anyway. He's his own boss. And he got a very nice horse out of it. And uh, as you can see. As you can see. So, and with no, no star surprise in it, there is a, there is a um, Valley Victor line, Yankee Clyde. So these things happen. He got lucky on that one, I think, but uh, maybe not so lucky the next time. It's still not a good cross and overhaul with ready cash, despite this having this one good one. But uh, you can see that ready cash, the Floristan, of course, the Floristan is passion on as well. Uh, you can see how he's impacted on a number of these readings. Uh, Keto de Talonet is Floristan, Super Bowl, of course, Star Sprite, Floristan, Floristan, Kimberland is Star Sprite. So uh, and Star Sprite is a pretty significant component of the of the uh, um, pedigree of the best, uh, of the dams that read best of ready cash. Also, you can see that there's a fair bit of line breeding to Speedster line, or at least the Peter Scott line. This cocktail jet is, goes back to Peter Scott, and this is Speedy Crown. This is again, same as cocktail jet. It's uh, the same line, Cesio Jocelyn is actually a Speedy Crown line. Um, so you see a fair bit of that down through here, Speedy Crown. That's the same line as cocktail jet, Cookie Jet, Cookie Williams. That's the Speedy Crown, Speedy Crown, Speedy Crown, Speedy Crown, uh, Speedy Crown. Speedy Crown, Speedy Crown, Speedy Crown, Speedy Crown. So the Speedy Crown connection and the Star Sprite connection were important, are important to Ready Cash. Most of these horses are not French friends. Most of them are Europeans, other Europeans. Yeah, a, lot are, yeah. a lot of them are Swedish. Uh, uh, the top two are French friends. And here's FaceTime Bourbon. Uh, I wrote up an article on him. He's a really interesting pet. He goes all the way back to, to the origins of the species. On his maternal line, he goes right back to a mare by, by uh, uh, Bartlett's child, Childers in the late 1700s or early 1700s. <clears throat> and Bald Eagle is a very similar pedigree, as you can see. He's the, one of the two, his two best. Bird Parker, of course, is an exception as well, but for a different reason. Uh, here's this Kepi Vera, which is the, uh, the French sire line. Uh, it's part of Reddy Cash's sire, uh, his dam, Reddy Cash's uh, father's dam. And it's shown up here in this, uh, in this particular pedigree, and here and here and here and here. So it is having an impact on occasion. 
especially on the French bread ones, like this one here, it's all for French bread. And uh, so, that's really cat. Bold Eagle's got some uh, offspring too. I don't know how he's doing. Uh, predominantly French. She's not, doesn't have as many on the, on the outside. I don't have a lot of those French breads. I don't have full racing information for, but here's his best one here as of first of last year. It hasn't been updated since. Will be updated uh, in January sometime. But this uh, best French bread, uh, here we have and Arafat. Kimberland again, Kimberland in this one here. This is the Kimberland that was in the in the maternal line of Ready Cash, goes back to uh, Floristan. Floristan is the, the tremendous impact on French breeding. And this one's of course inbred to Kimberland. And uh, the reason that, the reason for that is this bear here, Jamin, Jamin, I guess you would call it in France. So man goes back, uh, uh, she's by Abner who goes back to Intermed. Intermed is a source of the French, one of the strongest X factor lines in French breeding through a mare called Belle Poule. So it, it, uh, it's doubled up several times in, uh, in Ready Cash and also in uh, several of his, uh, uh, of his best performers. Norm, didn't Jaman win? Wasn't she the artichoke eating mare that won the international trot? Which one? Jaman. Um, Jaman. Well, she might well have been. I mean, there's some, some tremendous mares in, in, in this uh, family. Because Forestland well, Kimber, well, was by, uh, uh, was out of Rokapai. The one international trial. Because so Florida's mother, mother won the international trial. Yeah, broken by Yeah. And uh, that was Forest then. Yeah. So that's, uh, and you can see, you know, his, his San Francisco with Eddie Vanessa down here is not good as well. So, and Baron Dillon, that's uh, this, this, this bear is in red, uh, the X Factor in North America. Uh, and this bear carries uh, Kairos, of course, is his dam is Urani, who was a great mayor too, who came over here and beat the best in North America at one point. And Urani, if you look at her pedigree, you'll see that she's inbred to a mayor called Clementine, who's Belpole. X factor inbred. Clementine. So there's not a whole lot of secret about French maternal breeding. All you need to do is follow Belle Poole and a couple of other mares and uh, you'll find them all the way through all the top ones or most of the top ones, I guess. You can't say all, but uh, a large percentage of the top performers in French breeding have dams that trace back to Belle Pool or a couple of other ones like Personage is another one, a thoroughbred mare that has the same uh, thoroughbred maternal background as Belle Pool does. Goes all the way back to uh, the origins of the, the species, as they say. So that's just a little bit of French reading history. Let's, have, uh, let's have a look at this S1 by in Sweden by Bold, Bold Eagle and see what they did here. Well, this is, uh, at least it's doubling up on the Speedy Crown here. This is Speedy Crown, Speedy Crown, Muscles Yankee. Um, Nova Victory, Stars Pride. And so you have, you have your Star Sprite, Speedy Crown, Speedy Crown, and another 
Peter Scott line there. Uh, this one, Love You, of course, is out of a mare that goes back to uh, Volamite through, or Nova Victor through Adara plant. So, so there's a lot Actually, of interesting. Uh, uh, Bolli was also the father of the, the this year's uh, Norwegian winner of the Criterium, a uh, high flyer. You know. This one, more of a woman? It's a high flyer. High flyer is the name of the, the Criterium, the Norway. Norway. If you look up the horse, a high flyer. Oh, high flyer. Flyer, yeah. Norwegian. Yeah. He won the three years. That's a bald eagle, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Very similar pedigree. He's got no victory and three and three speech alliances. Uh, same same combination as that other one, the good one that we looked at already. Yeah. So it seems like a pattern there. But uh, again, it's you know the patterns that exist uh, in North American breeding are not necessarily replicated in in Swedish breeding because. If you look at a mare like this, you see very little inbreeding in it. Uh, if you go across the pedigree, you see even less. And that's pretty typical of European breeding. Uh, in North America, you'll see a lot of duplication in the fourth generation and some in the third generation. European breeders don't, don't seem to uh, appreciate what that can do. In fact, there's, uh, I, I suspect they're a bit scared of it, of what, what it can do. Uh, reference in your, uh, Ashley, your comments the other day about uh, inbreeding and, and concerns. It's a lot, it's a lot of uh, talk about it. And so forth, yeah. yeah, we don't want to go closer than three, three, three. You know? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 well, this is three, three here. There's nothing yeah. there. There's not even three, four in this one. So, that, as I say, you'll see a lot of European breads that are like that way. And it's interesting because some of the top French sires now are starting to show closer inbreeding maternally, such as, such as Bald Eagle and four by three to, to, to workaholic. Still not a whole lot across the pedigree other than that. Yeah. They seem to, yeah, they, whenever there's a ready cash in there, they want to go for Coppel, yeah, he, because he seems to be a good mix. Yeah, and, and if, you go, if you look at ready cash, there's a lot of workaholic in, in some of his uh, best ones. But ready cash himself was kind of a inbred form of forest Yeah. which you don't see in a lot of the older French breeding. I mean, you might see it back in here. But you see, the best thing there is the rockapine, you know. She, yeah, okay. She's on, yeah, on both sides. Yeah. Well, the Americans would tell you the best thing is the star's pride, but I, I won't get into that argument. Well, the star's pride <laughs> lines are not really doing well over there. They're doing far better over there than they are here, unfortunately. We are, we are losing our star's pride line. I mean, what do we have to offer them? And trotters. Uh, yeah. We've got some sons of uh, cadaver that aren't working. We got some sons of uh, uh, American winner, or uh, not, uh, or credit winner, that aren't necessarily setting the, the house on fire. And what else is there out there? Nothing. It's getting to be the, to the same point as what the Nova Victory Line became twenty years ago. Until Garland the Bell came along. We're going to need a savior for the Star Sprite line. Maybe it's ready cash. Maybe we should buy yeah. ready cash and bring them to P bring them to I was going to say bring them to PEI, but bring them to North America. He'd be well, I mean, if you can pay 115,000 for 115 million for 
syndicate called Our Stranger, I would think ready cash would be worth, you can probably get them for 50 million, will you? You would probably not get, a, get them at all because the French state were in to win. <laughs> <laughs> they don't sell anything. <laughs> not this one. <laughs> But uh, sooner or uh, later, they will have a problem with him as well because they're using him uh, quite a lot. But you know, you know, there's a lot of different kinds of quality in the French uh, trotting. You know, but if you look at the ones that actually are succeeding, and as you say, they are getting closer and closer in there as well. But in Scandinavia, we're kind of lucky because we can pick the best ones from the front French trotters and with uh, mix them with Americans. And yeah, but usually those best ones from the trotters in France have a, a significant component of. North American blood, maternal. Yeah. And that's what makes them work. You yeah, might, actually it is. You try to double that across the pedigree. There's not much point in going up to the top end because there's nothing there that fits your mare. Occasionally you will run into that, but I mean, uh, the ones that succeed are the ones that can be, can be connected maternally. Yeah. And we're seeing that with ready cash and old eagle and whatever. And it'll get uh, more and more so that way. Um, but there is a limit, as you referenced, uh, to how close you can go. And certainly, I'm not a fan of three by twos or two by threes or anything like that. You can get away with three by two in here on a mare. Uh, we've seen examples of that. One of the biggest, uh, best examples of that, of course, were Rainbow Blue. Uh, pacing mare, and then CRK Susie as the trotting mare. Uh, Rainbow Blue was a, was oh, an interesting yeah. one. She happened purely by chance. This is the horse that made 1.6 million. She was a big, strong mare, just like built along the same lines as on the road again. She was inbred to on the road again. Three by two. Now, back 15 years ago when she was bred, or 19, 20 years ago again, um, I asked Joe Thompson, uh, was at, I was at the farm doing a seminar about 15 years ago now, uh, giving his staff uh, an update on what was on the new pedigree matching program, and that was in 2006, I guess. And uh, the question of Rainbow Blue came up. I, well, I asked the question, I said, how did you come about breeding this mare this way? Mm -hmm. And Joe said, I, I didn't realize she was bred that way until somebody pointed it out to me afterwards. I said, what do you mean by that? He said, well, we have a process. <laughs> we have a process of breeding. We have so many mares. And we have a pile of paper over here that has, uh, each one is for each of the stallions that we have available to us, our own stallions and our syndicated stallions, our shares. Our shares are on the top, because those are the ones that cost us money. So they're, they're the ones that get most of the best mares. We do reserve some of the others for, for lesser mares. But anyway, <coughs> They had gotten down about halfway through their pile and then up came Vesta Blue Chip, an unraced mare by on the road again. And so the next sire on the available on the list on the on, on the pile of paper was Art Escape. So somebody took the Art Escape piece of paper and and the piece of paper for Vesta Blue Chip, put them together, stapled them set it off to one side. And that's how she was bred. Yeah. They never looked at the pedigree. Did she make some, has she made something after that? Oh, she made 1.6 million. Yeah, but uh, the offsprings? Oh yeah. At, she, at one time she had the fastest uh, by some beach somewhere. She just sold a daughter for 450,000 at Harrisburg at uh, Timonium. Okay, so that was just one, somewhere over the rainbow. Yeah. This was our first daughter. Yep. Our first full, or maybe our third full. At some beach somewhere, made 1.3 million. Um, so that is actually what everybody's looking for, because that is the... I, I have a feeling when you do those two, two or three, three on two, it's like 
one in a 10 times you really get that something. Well, it, it goes back to what I was showing you in previous uh, situations about those special mares that have Margaret Parrish and Helen Haller. Uh, this close inbreeding like this can stimulate something that's special. I don't know. Uh, just as a refresher, I'll show you her. This was Margaret Parrish, inbred to Arian, and of course, it goes back to Miss Russell. So you would call that incestuous breeding, I guess, because you're inside the three by three situation. But uh, that's Margaret Parrish, and Helena Hanover is exactly the same. Don't you think and, that Dolly Spanker mare has something to do with that too, Norm? Well, that's where it goes back to. It yeah. goes back to this, the X factor to the Spanker mare, every one of these. It, it's, I mean, it's so far back, it, it, it kind of defies, defies explanation as to why it would impact modern day pedigrees. But I just have to follow the traces up through and I, I see them again and again in the, in the maternal lines of top individuals. So something's happening. Mother nature doesn't make, makes course corrections. <laughs> so there's the same thing. Don't ask for the idea you Bye bye, goes to Nutwood, son of Miss Russell. Yeah. Uh, let's throw up uh, CRK Susie. Uh, as you can see, this is, uh, these are full brother and sister across the pedigree. Not exactly the same as the other. I've had this even closer than the other situation because this is a two by two to full siblings. Now she made 1.6 million when 1.6 million was probably worth about 4 million these days. So, and of course you see things like this, Dean Hanover and Hatteras, Dean Hanover and Hatteras there, Dean Hanover and Hatteras there. Her dam was inbred to Hatteras. She was inbred to Hatteras. In fact, clo very closely inbred to Hatteras because of this uh, very close inbreeding. So when she came along, uh, she was bred uh, by uh, Carl Allen, Carl Allen in, in Florida. And I met Carl one time, and it was shortly after um, she had retired racing and they asked him about the breeding. And he said, well, I just thought I'd try something different because he had the, the sire and he had the dam. So and in fact, he tried it three times, four times. And then, so it, it, it's, there's one by um, a Bano S in Germany. I actually, so, I, I, have, I have that one. I got it for free this year. I just, <laughs> Top Car Wash Girl. So she's in Germany? No, yeah, she, she's in Norway now or Sweden. So I got it for free. I, I just thought it was too bad to put it down. So, did yeah. you know I, I have a I had a a mare that I bred to a barn was. You had? Yeah, I've got frozen semen from uh, from Sweden. Uh, at that time, he had uh, he had just the, did he win the, the big? Uh, yeah, he won. He sure. was a good. Uh, yeah, he was a good one. He won the Prix de Marique, I think. Oh no, it wasn't a Banois, it was Dylan Lavelle. I got, he just won the Peter Marique and I got, uh, I got um, Sweden from, I got uh, uh, semen, frozen semen from Sweden for Dylan Lavelle from the owner. Um, and produced uh, a couple of trotters, I think here somewhere. 
They're in here under, under North America, I would say. Oh, yeah, they were down below here somewhere. Got a lot of them in. Oops, gone by. Here they are. There's three of them. Um, this one here didn't race, but you see, he's he's a. Uh, this is my attempt at the Swedish breeding here. <laughs> this is by Dylan Lavelle out of America called Ideal de Swede, who was a distance horse in the, in Sweden, uh, somewhat successful, owned by the same uh, owned by the same guy that had Dylan Lavelle. So okay. I, I got frozen semen from both of, from both of those sires just as an experiment. He wanted to see how they would do with American uh, mares. So these, these were my attempts to uh, produce something special. Ingrid didn't I, bre really I uh, bred the top car wash girl with the Muscle Hill son called El Diablo BR this year. Yeah. I'm just going to show you the other ones. Are the one that did race here, Dylan, by the Dylan Bell. Yeah, there's another one. A couple of them here. Yeah. This one, Scotian Critic, actually went back to Sweden. It did? Oh, no, no, the, uh, this one did. And raced in Sweden. Very briefly. Uh, the same guy that owned uh, Dylan LaBelle, he wanted to take it back. And, and he owned Scotian Critic as well. Um, I had bought the mare in fall to Dream Vacation at Harrisburg. And so this was. The mayor I experimented with, better to Dylan LaBelle, didn't get anything. But the critic vacation mayor turned out to be a nice mayor for us. We're looking up. Anyway, so I have experimented a little with Swedish horses. <laughs> Not with any success. Okay, we're at 4.08, so curfew time. Any last comments, anybody? Thanks a lot, Norm. Thanks a lot. All done. Good. Thank you, Norm. Thank you, Norm. Thank you. See you next week. Um, not sure what the topic will be. I'll come up with something. I'll post it. Okay. I'll send you the. Have a good one. Yep. Anybody got any uh, general suggestions? Or things to look at? I'll I'll, I'll think of something. Send you an email. Okay. Welcome. Welcome. All suggestions welcome. Topics. Okay. General topics, not just specific horses. Yeah. Only general topics. Good. See you later. Okay, thank you. Okay, bye. Right. Thanks, Norm. Bye now. Thank you. Yeah.